WCWB TV Channel 41 Macon. Macon Mayor George Israel formally presented his fiscal 1982 budget to the Macon City Council tonight, and the Macon Bibb County Transit Authority wants some $160,000 for new fare boxes for their buses. Details next on the late edition. He is out of town, and Sam has gone crazy. Sam wants to clear off this lot of homes, and there's no telling how far he'll go to do it. There's no stopping him. He'll trade anything. Your car, your dog, your kids, your wife. Well, he'll trade almost anything. If you want to take advantage of a madman, hurry on down to Larry's Mobile Homes before Larry gets back or before they lock Sam up. That's Larry's Mobile Homes, 4235 Broadway in Macon. From 41 News Central, this is the late edition, a complete and comprehensive look at the day's news, sports, and weather. Good evening, everyone. I'm Steve Stoller. Macon Mayor George Israel formally presented his fiscal 1982 budget to the Macon City Council tonight, and it is certain to create a storm of controversy and protest. Israel's budget calls for the termination of 86 city employees for alleged economical purposes. Israel presented council with a budget which, which, which calls for an appropriation of approximately $32.7 million for the next fiscal year, which begins on July 1st. $32.7 million figure is an increase of 2% over last year. The bulk of Israel's proposed terminations would come from the Sanitation Department, where he was asking for some 54 dismissals. This, however, is contingent upon arrival of Israel's plan to reduce sanitation pickup services to once a week. Council must approve a budget by July 1st if the city is to continue operating. Council President Eugene Dunwoody ordered all council committees to closely examine how this would affect the service provided by departments under their jurisdictions. The figures don't show it. However, the Reagan administration is insisting that the economy can best be described as sluggish. The gross national product zoomed upward during the first quarter, rising at an annual rate of 8.4%. More from Irving R. Levine. The figures show a booming economy. Corporation profits up 10.5%, the biggest increase in three years, meaning more jobs for Americans. But the government's broadest measure of the inflation rate was also up, up 10% at an annual rate, meaning high interest rates for mortgages and other loans. And in the Congress, the figures raised a new threat to the proposed Reagan tax cut from opponents who claim it will make inflation worse. I believe that uh, that proposal would be uh, highly inflationary in that it would produce huge deficits. And uh, I believe that the administration would be well advised to put an end to its uh, stonewalling and uh, its uh, no compromise uh, tough rhetoric and uh, indicate to the American people the truth. But administration officials argue that today's figures are no reason to change the tax proposal. Oh, absolutely not, because a tax cut is not inflationary, as we propose it. I see nothing wrong with a tax cut itself. I've never heard of a tax cut that's inflationary. Administration officials contend these first quarter figures represent the state of the economy earlier this year. And since then, the economy has gone into a slump. And they claim the only thing that can save the economy from getting much worse is prompt enactment of the Reagan program, including the tax cut. Irving R. Levine, NBC News at the Commerce Department. In other money matters, the Bibb County Commission met this afternoon and heard a request from the newly created Macon Bibb County Transit Authority for more money. Authority Chairman Charles Adams told the commission that the authority needed some $80,000 to purchase new fare boxes for the buses. According to Adams, the current boxes are old and dilapidated and spare parts cannot be found anywhere in the country. Adams added that it was essential for buses to have fare boxes because it provides a means for the control of money. If the county provides this assistance, Adams said the authority might be able to eliminate its current $1 million annual deficit. Chairman said he will ask the city of Macon to also contribute $80,000. In other action, the commission named Marjorie Allman to replace Elaine Cochran as head of the local Department of Family and Children's Services. Cochran, who headed the program for years, passed away last week after a lengthy illness. The Houston County Board of Commissioners has set a date when it plans to begin discussing the budget for the coming fiscal year. Carlton Cole has a story from Warner Robbins. Monday evening is the date Houston County Commissioners have set as the first public hearing on next year's county budget. The hearing is expected to be well attended as cries of double taxation have already been lodged by the county's three largest cities. One budget which will receive much attention is the county's fire department. 
since residents living near Perry were told they no longer would receive fire protection from that city. County Commission Chairman Dr. V.W. McKever says the fire department budget will be one of the first discussed. Well, we've been asked by uh, the uh, county uh, fire department and the uh, civil defense to review theirs uh, first because there's some equipment that uh, is on a state contract that uh, we might be able to take advantage of a great savings if we could go ahead and act on them. Uh, the comptroller has already prepared the request from the various departments and we will we'll start reviewing them uh, Monday at uh, 7 p.m. They're already in a stated form as we've done in the past and so we'll go through and hold open hearings on any of the budgets that are being submitted. In other action, the commissioners have approved the hiring of Leanne Bennett as the county extension agent home economist. Ms. Bennett comes highly recommended from Dr. Charles Rowland, the district extension director. Dodge County native will begin work June 1st at the extension agent's office in Perry. Carlton Cole, 41 News Central, Warner Robins. We'll have part two of our medical series on rural health care in middle Georgia when the late edition continues. and good times go together. And Piggly Wiggly makes them even better. Hickory smoked cured hams, the shank portion, 79 cents a pound, sliced free. Embers charcoal briquettes, 20 pound bag, $1.99. And blue plate mayonnaise, 32 ounce jar, 99 cents. Quality is not just a word of Piggly Wiggly, it's a promise. What could be better than Piggly Wiggly? Piggly Wiggly's the name. Come join Macon's Best on WNEX. This is Bill Elder. Join me from 6 to 10 weekdays for the liveliest Anything Can Happen brouhaha. At 10 o'clock, join Tim Vacula with Macon's Best Music and Midday Mindbenders. 3 o'clock and Terry Taylor, a mid-Georgia radio tradition. Folks have been riding home with Terry for years. If you're not, it's time you started. 7 o'clock and Daryl Cheeves comes on you. A night communicator for Macon's Best Radio. WNEX. of Georgia are without a physician and of the 13 11 have neither a doctor nor a dentist and while over 90 percent of the counties in Georgia are medically deficient a surplus of physicians is reported in some of the state's larger cities in his second of a five-part series on rural health care in middle Georgia New Central reporter Carlton Cole says there are some doctors which are providing health care to communities outside their own Dr. Larry Gaddis is a Hawkinsville physician who with his associates run a primary health care center in adjacent Wilcox County Three years ago, the county was listed by the Department of Health and Human Services as having a manpower shortage, and by their standards, it still does today. The doctors travel to Rochelle from Hawkinsville to disperse much-needed health services to the area. Dr. Gaddis feels that in the immediate future, this is how health care will be maintained in many rural areas. The new breed of family physicians that are coming out these days are going to be more willing to be mobile to to go to the patient and this is uh, in a way reverting to what it used to be and that the, the old country doctor would make his rounds uh, um, on a 40 50 mile area uh, we got away from that for years and the doctor would go to his town and set up his practice there and not be willing to help out the neighboring community but uh, the way we're learning to be, the way we're being trained these days, and uh, the uh, the impetus of the of part of our training is to provide care to as many patients as we possibly can. And uh, by doing this, or one means of doing this would be uh, to set up what we call satellite clinics. Dr. Gaddis maintains medical services are brought to many who would ordinarily not be able to get them. But he says the Rochelle Clinic is not without its problems. The way uh, we practice in the satellite clinic is somewhat different than in the ma main office in that uh, some of the equipment is not available. Uh, you have to re rely more on uh, your primary diagnostic skills rather than uh, some of the more sophisticated lab work which is not, it's not available in the satellite clinic. So uh, yes, yeah, you do have to change it. and. And some areas of the practice is difficult to do uh, in the satellite clinics. Uh, and one problem we've had is in OBGYN, for example, in following uh, uh, pregnancies. Still, not all rural areas in Georgia have satellite clinics. 
and several communities are without doctors. Tomorrow evening, we'll take a look at a university which wants to help. Carlton Cole, 41 News Central. And we'll have part three of our series on rural health care in middle Georgia tomorrow at 6 o'clock on the early edition. Pope John Paul is recovering nicely from gunshot wounds. That story and more next on the late edition. How do tough customers get more? I'm a tough customer. I want good prices, organization, cleanliness, and good service. I do prefer to shop at a green stamp store. Let's face it, one third of our income goes for food. I only shop at green stamp stores. If I can get this tackle box, or I can get myself a fry pan, that doesn't just make me a tough customer, that makes me smart. Go for the green, you get much more at a green stamp store. You get much more at Piggly Wiggly. Dentures are a necessary expense, but it's good to know that someone can help lessen that expense. Dr. W.L. Smith, DDS, located in the Tom Horton Dental Lab building in Roberta, offers quality dental work at affordable prices. Dentures start at $75, up or lower, or will rely for $30 and repair while you wait for $10 and up. Full dentures made in one day by appointment only. Stop by the Tom Hortman Lab in Roberta or by the Macon office at 3114 Pionona Avenue. For an appointment, call 781-4660 in Macon or 836-3141 in Roberta. Doctors report that Pope John Paul has vastly improved from the wounds he suffered in the assassination attempt last week. The pontiff went through a light workout today and resumed from some of his Vatican duties. More from Keith Miller in Rome. Doctors from Spain, France, Germany, Poland, and two from the United States joined the Italian medical team to examine the Pope. Chief of Medical Services Emilio Tresalti, speaking for the team, said John Paul's vital signs are returning to normal. He is able to sit up in bed and for the first time drank some fluids, a cup of tea. But the Pope's condition is still guarded. While we are pleased by his progress to date, it is clear that even a patient as remarkably fit as the Pope will require a prolonged period of recuperation. One of the American doctors, Claude Welch of Boston, examined the Pope twice. He looks it's wonderful to me. It's wonderful to you. Yes, yes. The other American, Dr. Kevin Cahill of New York, is a specialist in intestinal infections. I thought he looked well, as we say in this statement, and that he uh, really looks remarkably fit for a man who underwent what he did. The number two man in the Vatican, Cardinal Casseroli, met with the Pope for two hours and said John Paul was well enough to discuss matters of state. At Rome's police headquarters, the suspect in the attack on the Pope is still under a 24-hour watch. Mahmed Ali Aja reportedly boasted to police that he considered killing other world leaders, including the monarch of England. But when he found out it was a queen and not a king, he backed off, claiming his ideology would not permit him to kill a woman. Police believe Aja made up the story to mislead them. Keith Miller, NBC News, Rome. Memorial services will be held in Tucson tomorrow for Beatrice Evans, a 95-year-old black woman who rose from her Macon beginnings to the top of her field in insurance sales in Chicago. She entered the insurance business in Chicago in 1919, first with Liberty Life and later with Mutual of New York. She counted the late boxer Joe Lewis as one of her clients with Mutual. She retired in Tucson in 1968. A Macon City Councilman who plans to erect billboards which say, Warning robbers, we don't want your business, you may be shot has drawn the fire of a judge who says innocent people could be killed. Alderman Ed DeFore says the signs, which will go up the first week of June and remain for at least a month, will, dea, will be a deterrent to robbers. But probate judge Tillman Self, whose duties include issuing pistol licenses, said the signs will simply make robbers trigger happy. Self said DeFore is inviting people to get killed. DeFore has publicly urged store owners and salespeople to arm themselves and wants the city to set up a training program in the use of guns. He failed to persuade his colleagues in the Macon City Council six weeks ago to issue a proclamation honoring a gas station attendant and a food store clerk who shot would-be robbers. The cases of three Warner Robins teenagers have been bound over to juvenile court in Houston County for the weekend vandalism of Warner Robins Junior High School. Warner Robins police say the three teenage boys climbed through a window of the main building and ransacked the classrooms, the library, and the administrative offices. The damage to the building and the equipment has been estimated between five and ten thousand dollars. The youths have been placed in the custody of their parents while awaiting their court date. Turning to sports, Walt, you have some news about the Macon Peaches tonight. Well, Steve, I don't know what Chris has in her forecast. We'll find out in a few minutes, but evidently it's raining up in North Carolina. The Macon Peaches hooked up with the Shelby Mets tonight in North Carolina, and the Peaches were enjoying a 6-5 to five lead in the top of the fifth when the Carolina Reigns came. 
After a short delay, both clubs tried again, but it was no use. The contest was called off. The game will be played over as both clubs will have a double header scheduled tomorrow starting at 6.30. Macon is currently 18 and 21 overall and six and a half games back in the Sally League South. In professional baseball tonight, Pittsburgh five, the Atlanta Braves nothing. Jim Bibby allowed a leadoff single to leadoff hitter Terry Harper. Then he threw a perfect game for the rest of the way. Quite a ball game for Jim. Phil Negro suffered the loss for the Braves. Cincinnati shuts out uh, Chicago 5 to nothing. Tom Seaver with a four hitter there. St. Louis is leading Houston 10 to nine in the sixth inning. Montreal a one to nothing leader over San Diego there in the third inning. Over in the American League, Boston over Seattle, four to nothing. Frank Tanana the shutout. Baltimore edges Oakland six to five. Six losses in a row now for the A's. In the seventh inning, it's Toronto eight and Chicago four. Cleveland a seven to three winner over California tonight. In the sixth inning, it's the New York Yankees six and Kansas City five. Detroit blast Texas tonight, 14 to one. Dan Schatzetter the winner there. And in the fifth inning, Milwaukee leads Minnesota by a three to one score. Last year, the Kansas City Royals were the champions of the American League, the cream of the crop, the Yankee killers. This year, with no personnel changes, they are doormats with the worst record in the American League. Gordon Docking tries to find out why. The Kansas City Royals got off to the worst start in the team's history, falling more than 10 games below 500 for the first time since 1972. The defending American League champs have also been spending time in the Western Division cellar. Obviously, we're not pitching well enough, uh, not enough clutch pitching, clutch hitting, clutch fielding, uh, you know, you name it, it's not there. It seems like the nights that we get good pitching, we don't get the hitting, we get the hitting, we don't get the pitching. To be a successful ball club, as we know and as we've been in the past, what we have to do is get them both together on the same nights. I think the big blame is the hitting, and I'm just as much at fault as everybody else. Uh, I'm not driving in the runs I did last year. I'm not getting on base, I'm not hitting for the average, and uh, it's very frustrating. George Brett, last year's best hitter in baseball with a 390 batting average and 118 RBIs this year, has driven in only three. And 1980s Fireman of the Year Dan Quisenberry is not fooling many batters this year with his submarine delivery. No one on this team is having fun right now. No one likes to lose games. Uh, I'm sure the fans are tired of us losing, but more tired of us losing are, are ourselves. Uh, we're a good ball club. We know we're a good ball club, and we should win our division, but we're just trying too damn hard right now. With Kansas City's talent, there is little doubt that they will turn things around, but it will take a dramatic comeback for the Royals to catch Oakland in the West. Gordon Docking for NBC News, Kansas City. Game four of the National Hockey League Stanley Cup playoffs is situated in Minnesota tonight. And in the second period, it's Minnesota 2, the Islanders 2. New York leads the series 3 to nothing. They can take home the cup tonight with a win. The Southeastern Conference has released their 1981 college football predictions, and Georgia Bulldog fans may be a little bit surprised. The defending national football champs aren't even picked to win their own conference. The poll of conference sports information director showed Alabama as the top choice by a wide margin. The Tide picked up seven first place votes to the Dogs three and had 87 overall points compared to 78 for Georgia. Florida was a close third with 77. The following teams were Mississippi State in fourth, followed by Tennessee, LSU, Auburn, Ole Miss, Kentucky, and Vanderbilt. Opening testimony began in Los Angeles today in the antitrust suit brought by the Oakland Raiders against the National Football League. The Raiders and the commission which runs the Los Angeles Coliseum are suing the league and the Rams for $21 million. Joe Ramirez explains what happened. The controversial NFL rule which has blocked owner Al Davis of the Oakland Raiders from moving his team to Los Angeles. Attorney Max Bleacher representing the Los Angeles Coliseum charged in his opening statements that the rule concerning franchise moves violates the Sherman Antitrust Act by preventing business competition. Bleacher told a jury of seven women and three men that the NFL's action has resulted in heavy financial losses for the Coliseum. The two central figures in the case, NFL Commissioner Pete Rozelle and Davis, talked to reporters during a recess. How much of this is going on because of your dislike for Al Davis, the owner of the Raiders? None of it. My job as commissioner is to enforce the rules of the Constitution and bylaws, the rules that Al Davis and the Raiders accepted when they came into the league and then some 10, 12 years later said they didn't like them. I have my contract states that I am to enforce the rules of the NFL, the Constitution, and that's what I'm doing 
in this case. They just don't want the world champions in Los Angeles. I wouldn't uh, comment on what it is. I think the idea is to see to it that we get here and uh, tell our story in court, tell what happened. It's just uh, an inconceivable thing that they would prevent this community from having a football team. And the trial may last as long as three or four months. The Coliseum hopes that if there is a favorable verdict, it will come in time so that the Raiders can play football here in Los Angeles in 1981. Joe Ramirez for NBC News, Los Angeles. And it all doesn't matter. The Falcons are going to win the Super Bowl next year anyway. We'll have more sports right after this. It's starting to get warmer, and now is the time to beat the upcoming summer heat with an air conditioner from Brantley Company. Brantley Company is having a preseason sale on air conditioners. Buy now. Don't wait for summer. It'll be here sooner than you think. Brantley Company also offers to clean, service, and inspect your unit for just $35. They service and repair all residential and commercial air conditioners. Get ready for the summer at Brantley Company. They're a state licensed, insured, and bonded company. That's Brantley Company, 1416 Emory Highway, Macon. This is Wayne from Wayne's Auto Sales, and I want to talk to you about all these good specials I got. You want a van? I got it. I had it. You want a family car? I got it. I had it. You want a truck? I got it. I had it. You want a sports car? I got it. I had it. But I still got plenty of good used cars and good used trucks here. That's right, with a good financing plan, five-minute delivery service, I do all the financing. You buy here, you pay here. We do it all for you. Come see the real Wayne. Wayne's Auto Sales, Pineal Avenue, Macon, Georgia. The Macon Raceway reopened last Saturday for the Goodyear 200 stock car race in Byron. Gene Morgan won the race, which was the first one at the raceway in nearly three years. Among those on hand to compete was Davey Allison, the 20-year-old son of racing star Bobby Allison. Davey, how long have you been racing? Uh, started my third year this year. How do you like it so far, and how's the tour been for you? I love it, and I've been doing very well. I'm better than I expected so far. Was there any pressure on you when you were growing up to become a racer? There was at first, but uh, I realized after I got started that I was going to have to do it on my own. You know, I have to prove myself that just because I was Bobby Allison's son didn't make me a winner. How's your dad been doing lately? Very good. He won at uh, Talladega a couple weeks ago, and he finished third at Nashville last week, so he's doing a lot better. So where does Davey Allison go after this race? The next race for me will be back to the regular shows at Birmingham and Montgomery next week. And tomorrow night, we'll talk with 17-year-old Texan Robin McCall. That's it for sports tonight. Thank you, Walt. College students are finding ways to cut corners in light of the rising cost of going to school. Used textbooks are becoming popular items on campus. T.J. Beer reports. The cost of many new college textbooks has doubled in the last five years. For example, highly technical science books have increased from $25 to $50. That trend has sent an increasing number of students to the used book racks, are at least one-fourth less than the new listings. And then at the close of the semester, more students who are caught in a financial bind are selling back their books. Store owner Roger Stamm says five years ago, 20% of the area university students were returning textbooks for resale. This spring, the total was closer to 50%. But the economy is not the only reason the used textbook business is booming. Computers are expanding the market. The wholesale people have probably been more aggressive as far as just taking care of the idea of servicing the college stores more than anybody else has. And I think that's why it has grown more than anything else. You know, the advent of the computer has helped. Uh, they are able to keep track of, of books that there are demands for. Um, you know, if we are using a particular book, uh, they are able to keep track of those things going in and out of the warehouse. Stam says if trends this spring continue, there will be an even bigger rush for used books this fall. T.J. Beer for NBC News. And now to weather with our chief prognosticator, Chris Quimby. Yes, sir, and we're prognosticating some fair weather after a little chance of rain. Today we had six hundredths of an inch of rain. A high temperature was 82 degrees. The low was 66. Record high 96 in 1962. The record low was 45 degrees in 1976. Currently under fair skies, which will become cloudy. The humidity level is 68 percent. The temperature is 69. Bar barometric pressure 29.83 and steady. Winds are westerly at 5 miles per hour. The Okmulgee River at Macon 5.4 feet and falling Dublin 2.9 and falling the Oconee. Lake Sinclair is down one-tenth of a foot.
A cold front is moving in from the Pacific Ocean into low pressure over the southern Nevada area. So far, no rain activity associated with this front. As a matter of fact, they had sunny skies today in the southwestern United States. A lot of beautiful high pressure over the Midwest, bringing fair skies, a bit of high-level cloudiness to the area. However, the sun broke through another lovely day. But we did have rain over in the southeastern corner of the United States. Locally, not quite as much rain as we'd hoped for, six hundredths of an inch of rain. It started out around the central portion of Georgia last night, and right now we can see that there is a very heavy thunder shower located in the Gulf of Mexico. It's approximately 100 to 200 miles off the coast of Florida, and it is moving toward Florida. Some very heavy thunder showers in that area. Also, thunder showers over the Carolinas, parts of northern Georgia into Alabama. Also, some over Mississippi, as far north as Virginia, West Virginia, and the south southern Ohio Valley. The low spot was 26 degrees today, and that was in Traverse City, Michigan. The high, 98, and that was in Orlando, Florida. So, some hot weather, some cold weather, some rainy weather in between. Low pressure is what's bringing us this rainy weather. This cold front is moving very slowly on through Georgia. We're going to talk about where it's going, how fast, and what it's leaving behind after this message. People think weightlifting will get you in shape. But big muscles aren't the same as total fitness. I'm John Magel. And I'm Bill McArthur. We're exercise physiologists, and we've designed a new fitness program for European health spas called PACE. PACE is for men and women, and it's a complete workout for your whole body, not just parts of it. So for a fast, efficient way to get in shape, try PACE at European health Spa. You can put those down there. Those must be heavy. Scattered showers are located from Anniston, Alabama, all the way over to the areas, um, some parts of Georgia over in North Georgia. We are seeing some rain right now. It's located mostly, most heavily, over Cartersville, Georgia, also over Gainesville, Georgia. And it looks like this band of showers is relatively stable. No movement has been indicated over the last, say, hour and a half. We can see now that we ha do have some pleasant temperatures around the state. And as our 41 forecast shows us, we're going to have some few more clouds moving in tonight. So we have fair skies now. But tonight there's a 40% chance of thunder showers. Low will be in the low 60s. Tomorrow it's going to be cloudy once again. A bit cooler. The highs in the upper 70s. Fair tomorrow night with a low in the low 60s. Thursday through Saturday, our extended outlook shows some pretty nice weather coming at us. Highs will be in the 80s and lows in the 60s. And that's the weather shape up for Middle Georgia. Thank you, Chris. And that's our late edition for this Tuesday evening. Join Carol Wilkinson for our 725 and 825 reports tomorrow morning during the Today Show. For Walt, Chris, and the entire News Central team, I'm Steve Stoller. Have a good evening and a pleasant tomorrow. It's better than the truth. I never met the father. It's provided.